Hello again folks, in this video I'm going to be taking you through the GoTech Drive. I'm going to be talking about what it is and what it does and then I'm going to show you in super simple, easy to follow steps how to install custom firmware on the device. In this case, the superb Flash Floppy by Care Fraser. Now there are many tutorials on YouTube showing you how to install custom firmware on the GoTech and to be quite frank some of them are nothing short of confusing. So hopefully this video will serve to demonstrate just how quickly and easily this can be done. It really is a simple process and you will be up and running in probably less than 5 minutes. You can quote me on that. Um, after that, I'm then going to show you a couple of super simple hardware mods that are going to improve the user friendliness of the device and indeed the nostalgia factor of the device. So we'll have a look at those at the end of the video, like I say. So with all that said, what is it? Well, it is a direct replacement for the venerable three and a half inch floppy drive and uh, diskette. Of course, many vintage systems such as Commodore Amiga, Atari ST, etc, etc, use the the old floppy disks and you know some of these are 20 30 years old now um they may have been worn out they may have mold grown in actual uh, diskette surface themselves and you just get constant read write errors and it's frustrating you know i've been an amiga user for probably almost 30 years now and there's nothing worse than putting a uh, one of your favorite games in and it just doesn't work because it's it's too old and the disc's damaged so um this is a product came in the market um, and has been adapted to be used on vintage computer systems. Um, essentially what it is, is um, a floppy disk emulator. Rather than using a diskette, you put your disk images on a thumb drive, you pop it in the front. Um, this is obviously connected into whatever computer system you're using. Um, these can be used in keyboards, as in musical keyboards as well, for loading MIDI files, etc, etc use them on anything that's got a floppy disk drive whatever the device is uh, you know it will just see it as a floppy drive but yeah sorry back to what i was saying you install your disk images on there you plug it in you select whatever disk image you want on this uh, display here and the computer loads it as as it would do a floppy disk it, it works perfectly it's a really good simple system um so yeah that's what it does let's have a look at it then um we've got a three digit uh, seven segment uh, LED display here and like I just mentioned there that allows you to uh, select whatever disk image you want and these are the up and down buttons to, to flick through the, the numbers uh, 000 to 999 so yeah you know about a thousand or so um, disk images you can put on of course dependent on the size of your uh, thumb drive um, I don't know what the maximum supported size is I've used a 32 gigabyte and it works fine so that is you know more than plenty you know we're talking thousands and thousands of Amiga games um, but yeah we've got the USB port itself as I've just mentioned and we're up and down buttons and that is the LED activity light for the floppy you know the floppy activity light like you get on the front of a normal drive on the back, we've got a standard floppy uh, ribbon cable connector, the uh, power connector and a couple of headers. Now I've taken the three screws out here just to show you inside. Uh, you'll note that there is a power LED here. Um, there isn't provision for it on the, on the, uh, the moulding. I don't know why. They may have separate moulds or different versions and they've just popped this particular version in a different case but if you wanted you could drill a hole through there but you know you're going to have a power light on your your Amiga or whatever system you're using anyway. We've got this arm processor here that's the brains of the operation the thing that makes the, the whole thing work. Uh, that's a display there. Uh, a few surface mount components a little voltage regulator there and uh, like I say a couple of headers. Now if you're using this uh, on an Amiga you will want that set to S0. That will allow the Amiga to see it as DF0. If you're wanting it on an external enclosure or whatever you probably set it to S1 I think it is. Your device might not come with these headers populated. Quite often these are just left as uh, you know the holes in the PCB. I indeed had to solder these headers in. Um, but this is the header that you're going to use in conjunction with the power here to program it. So, as I mentioned programming, um, I think that's what I'll show you uh, what to do next. How we set it up uh, to uh, be flashed with the custom firmware. So once you've um, soldered your header in there, I mean it's not entirely necessary. You could poke wires through the holes, of course that's not as 
uh, reliable. Um, if you've got basic soldering skills, it isn't difficult to do. Um, if you don't have them and you're not uh, comfortable with it, speak to one of your friends. Uh, they might be able to, to solder those in for you. Uh, very cheap off eBay if you require them. You know, you're talking about getting maybe a hundred of these for 99 pence, including delivery, something like that. But it just makes the whole deal just that little bit easier to do. So, what, how are we going to program it? Well, there's two ways. You can use a, a USB-A to USB-A as in that type connector so that on both ends of a lead and um, i didn't have one and um, to be honest i prefer you know using things like this this is a usb to ttl serial programming uh, module um if you if you don't have a an a to a connector you can make one it's a slightly different process and um, but you know these are a pound from aliexpress it's just if you follow this step follow these steps you won't go wrong really really easy so let's uh, crack on and get it set up. So I've did a little diagram here just to make it a bit easier for you to understand. Um, and this basically mirrors the um, mirrors the pin headers. If I do that, actually, <laughs> yeah, mirrors the pin headers and the the DC connector here, the power connector. Right. Okay. Let's crack on. So first thing we're going to do is place a jumper over the first two pins. So we'll call the top left pin one, two, three, four. So left to right, one to whatever. Uh, you do get a little bag of screws and uh, jumpers with the device, as well as a driver CD for Windows-based machines. But the jumper itself, one of these little things, basically connects the two pins together. So we're connecting pin one and two together, as you can see in the diagram. So those two pins connected together. Then we'll take a little uh, jumper leads, little female to female leads, and then we'll take the um, two pins immediately right of the jumper, and that is our transmit and receive. Okay, so I'll bring that up to the camera so you can see. So there we've got a jumper across there, and then yellow and orange on the next two pins. Okay, then gonna take a uh, my green lead and put it in the far right hand side of the power connector and then going right to left this time I'm going to miss the next pin out and then put the blue on there so there you can see we've got green in the far right miss the next pin and then blue on that second pin there okay so blue is going to be ground and green is the 5 volts we're then going to take our uh, serial programmer. We'll take our um, orange and yellow. So the yellow is connected to transmit and the orange to receive and those have to be reversed on the programmer because of course if this is transmitting it needs to go to the receiver and um, if that is transmitting it needs to go to the receiver on this. So you don't connect transmit to transmit it's the opposite if that makes sense. So we'll take the yellow which is the transmit from the device and we're going to connect that to the receive of the programmer and then the receive of the device we're going to connect to the transmit of the programmer okay that makes sense let's hold it up there feel free to pause that if you wish okay next thing we're going to do is going to take our green which is our five volts and we'll connect that to 5 volts on the, the programmer and then we're blue which is ground we're going to connect that to ground on the programmer now just check the connections on your programmer it may be slightly difficult uh, different I should say so there we go again I'll just uh, you can pause that there if you need to just to see the um, see, see the wiring okay and that is you set up to flash the device so what i'll do now is i'll stop this video i'll go over onto the laptop i'll bring up the the websites and the software that we need to to um you know to program the thing and uh, we'll show you just how simple it is
So, I'll catch you in a moment. Welcome back. Right, we're now in a position to flash the GoTech with the custom firmware. We've prepped a drive, connected it to our programmer. All we need now is the software. And if you check down in the description below, I have linked to all the required software, just so it's a little bit easier for you to find. But initially, we're going to head over to Kia's Flash Floppy Wiki page. And once we're there, we can read about what the firmware supports, a little bit about the project, etc, etc. And once we've done that and we're happy, we can proceed to the download page. We're going to download the latest version, which in this case, as you can see, is version 0.8.1a. And uh, Kia does put out regular updates to the firmware. And it's worth noting that once you've actually flashed it using a programmer or an A to A USB lead, and you've installed the drive in your Amiga or your Atari or whatever, you don't need to take it out to upgrade it. You can simply download the upgrade file for the firmware onto a thumb drive, put it into the GoTech, hold down the two GoTech buttons and then power on your machine and then the device will enter uh, firmware upgrade mode. It will find the firmware on the root of the, your pen drive and upgrade in a matter of seconds. It's a really nice feature, I'm sure you'll agree. But we'll download that now. A uh, very small file, as you can see it's popped in there very quickly in the bottom left. And at this point, I would suggest that you extract that to your desktop just so it's nice and easy to find. Once you've done that, head over to uh, the st.com website and then we're going to download the STM32 Flash Loader Demonstrator. So right at the very bottom of the page, you can click Get Software, uh, read through the license agreement if you wish to do so and click Accept. And that will download another zip file, which you should then extract to your desktop and install the executable. I won't do that because I've already got it installed in my on my machine. But at this point, you can plug in your programmer with the GoTech connected to it. So that's it plugged in. I've got two LEDs, one for power and one showing me that it is connected to uh, you know, a, a device that can accept a firmware upgrade. I'm going to open up the Demonstrator GUI and select COM6, which is the COM port for my uh, programmer, and then click Next. Now, as you can see there, it says target is readable. Please click next to pre uh, proceed. If you've got a brand new GoTech drive that you've just, you know, you've just uh, purchased it and it's just arrived, it's likely that uh, you will need to remove protection. So just click the remove protection button and uh, follow the steps through. It's quite intuitive. As you can see, the device is 128 kilobytes uh, flash size, and that's going to be more apparent in the next page. Because you just want to make sure that your target is the correct one, 128K B, uh, and there we go. There's a couple other devices in there, but we need to make sure that's the correct one. And you know, not that you would have, but if you had two serial programmers, you just want to make sure it is the right device, uh, so that you don't try and flash the wrong firmware onto the wrong device and end up bricking something. But um, nine times out of ten, you you shouldn't really need to touch that. Click next. And then we're going to download to the device, the second uh, point down there. We're going to find the firmware, so we'll click on the Browse for Files. Uh, go to Desktop, there's a flash floppy there. Uh, I can't see the hex file, and that's what we need. And we need a hex file, that is our firmware. So we need to change the file extensions to show hex files. And there we go, there's a GoTech 0.81a hex. Double click that click global erase and click verify after download and then click next and in 30 seconds or so uh, our GoTech will be programmed it's as simple as that super quick not scary at all to do really simple really quick so it's just going to verify the data it's transferred and hopefully we should get a green bar saying operation completed successfully or what's to that effect and we do. So we can now click close at that point and then disconnect a programmer. And that is our GoTech ready to go. The only thing that remains to do is install um, the software that's uh, required on the thumb drive. So if we go back to Kia's um, page on GitHub and go to usage, about halfway down, the uh, easiest one to use is the HXE auto boot mode you can download that file again the link will be in the description below and once you've done that and extracted it to your desktop again you'll have this folder here which I'll open up now bring up your pen drive which should be formatted to FAT32 and initially we're going to go into config files auto boot mode 
and then drag that config file in there like so so there's the um, the links there so firmware config files auto boot mode and then we're going to go back to the file selector Amiga and there's our auto boot.hfe we can close that down now and the only thing that remains to do is to add a couple of ADF files so images of Amiga discs so there's Lemmings at disk 1 and 2 and that is the drive prepared so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the video I'm going to go I'm going to plug the drive into the Amiga and I'm just going to quickly show you uh, how it works and then we'll do those little couple of hardware mods uh, see what you think of those so I shall catch you in just a moment. Welcome back. Right, that is the GoTech installed in the Amiga. I'm using these longer leads just to allow me to move it around and show you on the camera. Um, if you are using different leads, do please take care about the orientation of these cables because if you get them upside down, of course, you run the risk of damaging your Amiga and or your GoTech, which uh, of course is not good. One last thing we need to do before we test it is remove this jumper now. I've obviously disconnected the programmer. We need to remove this jumper which is only used um, for when we're programming it using the programmer. So we'll remove that and top tip just put it on the end pin there. So if you do need uh, to you know jumper that again to program it in the future you're not going to be hunting around for one because that's going to stay on there. It's not going to short. So there we go. Okay so we'll power it on. And if you watch the screen initially, it should come up FF, the flash floppy. There we go, very uh, briefly. And then it goes to 000. And that just means that the uh, drive is using the uh, it's, uh, auto boot uh, files on there uh, to, to bring up the menu system on the screen, which it is doing now. So what I'll do is I'll just briefly pause the video and show you what happens on screen. Okay, so there we go. There's our uh, uh, initial screen, if you like. Tells a bit about the firmware and what it's based on. We can see at the bottom left there that it's the uh, Flash Floppy 081A, as as we just installed. And it asks us, it asks us to play, press Enter or Fire. So I'll just press Enter. And then it checks the uh, pen drive. And as you can see, there are our files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Lemmings. Uh, and press enter and then that asking me to assign it to a slot so I'm just going to go down to number one and then press enter and I'm going to go up to two and then press enter and assign that to slot two at that point I can then press F10 saving selection and then it reboots the machine now on the screen uh, I'm not going to show you but on the screen it says 001 if I, give me a moment zero zero one and on the screen is lemmings come on there's a Cygnosis uh, splash screen so I won't go into too much detail you know what the Amiga does and the games that are on it um, but that's just a, a brief demonstration of how it works now of course if it asks us to insert disk 2 on the screen all we need to do is this all we do is press the button and as you can see it moves to floppy at number two and that is pretty much it so I'm gonna pause the screen again I'm gonna get stuff out of the way and then we're gonna show you these two little mods I was telling you about so bear with me just a moment right welcome back okie dokes the first mod we're gonna look at is to do with the display currently the display is showing 001 which we know is lemmings this one and 002 is lemmings disk 2 now we know that because we've only just put them on the thumb drive but what happens if we had hundreds of images on our thumb drive we would you know theoretically have to write down which each uh, you know which disk image corresponded to each number and that's not really practical is it but here's firmware here um you know he's programmed it so that you can use different displays and you don't need to mess about with uh, sort of configuration files or anything like that um, all you need to do is uh, disconnect the old display and plug in a new one and the new one that you're going to plug in uh, can give you a lot more information which is pretty good so we'll just turn off the machine and I'll show you how to install it all you're going to do is take out the old display 
and it just pulls out. It's not glued in or anything. When that's in place, the top half of the case has this uh, piece of plastic which holds the display and stops it from uh, sort of pushing inside the case. Um, as you can see just now, uh, the leads are stacked on top of one another. We've got blue on the right hand side and yellow on the left hand side as you look at, look at it. All you need to do is pull those off and then rotate them 90 degrees so that yellow or whatever colour you've got is on top. Meaning that the connectors are now side by side rather rather than on top of one another. Okay. And you can use a couple of these OLED displays. I've got two of them here. Uh, which I've used in Arduino projects. Um, you've got this larger one here and a smaller 0.91 inch one. Now, I've tried both these displays and the, the smaller screen is actually better. On the larger screen, it stretch, uh, stretches the text. So I won't uh, use that or even show you it, but it does work if you've got one of these lying around. Um, and what we do here is the cable, cables that we've just changed around, remember they're side by side now, uh, the one that's closest to the board, so the right hand side one here, and the top, so yeah, the top right hand cable, which is yellow, we plug that into SDA, and the blue goes into the SCK, like so, and provided your cables are the same colours, all you need to do is mirror that, like so. So the two top, uh, the two top wires go to uh, the right and left of the connector as you look at it here, and the two bottom wires go to the left and right of the the middle pair of pins if that makes sense. And if we turn it on now, rather than getting a number, it tells us that uh, Lemmings disc one selected. And if we want Lemmings disc two, we can do that, and we can just scroll through um, the disc images on. Now, autoboot.hfe, that is the uh, where you basically select the um, selected disk images and where you put them in the slots. We've also got, um, as you probably just saw there, the, the track uh, skipping through, and that's essentially the, the floppy disk uh, searching through the disk uh, as it would do. But um, you don't get that, um, you know, that clicking, that uh, 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 noise, do you? You know, that you, you would know from the Amiga. Or, uh, or do you? Because of course, Kia's put another um, mod on this, and it's a really good one. Um, it allows you to use a piezo transducer. I've got about six or something. I got six for one pound fifteen clean delivery. And all I've done is uh, put some female pins on the end there, or sockets, whatever you want to call them. And uh, yeah, solder the solder them onto the the leads. And if we get a piece of tape. and tape it onto something hard, like the, the case. Uh, now I have tested this on the Amiga upper case, the top half of the case, and it does sound great on that. It's a little bit quieter on here because the plastic's a bit, uh, it's more rigid because it's smaller, if that makes sense. Um, but if you remember from earlier, we've got that S0 jumper that we installed. Uh, above that, as you look at the screen now, you've got JB, that is 5 volts in ground, doesn't matter what way these go on, if you pop those on there and then boot the machine there you go You've got your, um, your, your good old uh, floppy drive noise there. It's not perfect, of course. It's you know it's not going to sound exactly the same, but what a fantastic little feature on that firmware. But there we go. I think we'll call it a night at that, boys and girls. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Hopefully you found it a bit more easier to follow than some of the other videos uh, on YouTube. Um, I've tried to make it as simple as I can, but... You know, as I showed you before, the actual flashing of the drive, the 
perceived difficult part of the operation is really simple. Um, just follow that video, uh, use the links down below for the software and you won't go far wrong. If you did enjoy the video, please give me the thumbs up. Um, if you didn't, please give me the thumbs down, but give me some constructive feedback, please. Uh, you know, I don't mind thumbs down if it's warranted, but like, a bit of constructive feedback. If you haven't already done so, and you'd like to do so, click on my fat, de fat head down here, wherever it is. And, um, you know, if you enjoyed this video, you think others would find it useful, please share it. And um, until next time, as always, take care of yourselves, and all the best.